Welcome to the online tutorial presented by Yoon Biology Nowadays. In the last few videos, we saw Vitaka's five kingdom classification system and the members of those kingdoms. Vitaka tried to include all the living organisms under these kingdoms based on some criteria. We have already discussed about these criteria in the part 1 of the biological classification lecture. However, Vitaka didn't include some organisms like viruses, viroids and lichens in his classification system. In this video, we will see more about these organisms and why they were not classified under any of the five kingdoms of Vitaka's classification. First, let's see about viruses. The word virus means venom or poisonous fluid. The scientific study about viruses is called virology. The reason why Whitaker didn't include viruses in his classification was that viruses are not truly living. Or in other words, they show characters of both non-living and living. They are acellular or non-cellular, which means they don't have a cell. You know that a cell is the basic unit of life. So when viruses don't have a cell, means they are not living, right? They have an inert crystalline structure, but they can multiply inside the living cells of infected organisms. Wow, they can reproduce and that's a feature of living organisms. So I hope now you understood why Whitaker didn't include viruses in his classification. Viruses are intracellular obligate parasites which means that they are strict parasites inside a living cell. In humans, they cause diseases such as smallpox, chickenpox, mumps, herpes, influenza. By the way, did you know about the 1918 influenza pandemic? It is described as one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. About 500 million people were affected around the world during this influenza outbreak. This is a newspaper article about the influenza of 1918. And it was reported that 6 million people died because of this. Other diseases caused by viruses are measles, polio, rabies and AIDS. Many of these diseases can be easily prevented by vaccination. But if you don't get vaccinated, there is a high chance of getting infected. If infected, these viral diseases are very difficult to treat because the viruses cannot be stopped even with antibiotics. Antibiotics are mainly to stop bacteria and they will not work with viruses because viruses have different structures and reproduce in a different way than bacteria. In plants, viruses show symptoms such as mosaic formation, leaf rolling and curling, yellowing and vein clearing, dwarfing and standard growth. Do you know the story behind the discovery of viruses? It started when Louis Pasteur understood that the causative agent of rabies was too small. Too small means he was not able to see it under a light microscope. However, he failed to identify the causative agent. In 1884, a French microbiologist, Charles Chamberland, invented a filter called the pasture chamberlain filter with pores smaller than bacteria. So what will happen if we pass a solution with bacteria through this filter? All the bacteria will get trapped in the filter and the solution that comes out of the filter will be free of bacteria. Here you can see an old advertisement about this filter. In this advertisement, the company which manufactured this filter claims that this filter will protect you from all waterborne diseases caused by microbes in water. So I think the pasture Chamberlain filter was something that even the common people of those days used to get pure drinking water. In 1892, a Russian biologist, Ivanovsky, used this filter to study about the leaf mosaic disease of tobacco. He crushed some infected tobacco leaf and took the extract. Then he passed this extract through the pasture chamberlain filter. 
So he expected that the bacteria which caused this disease will be trapped in the filter. But surprisingly, the extract after passing through the filter remained infectious. Which means that the filtered liquid was able to cause infection in a healthy tobacco plant. What does this mean? It means that the causative agent of tobacco mosaic disease is not bacteria, but something smaller than bacteria which could easily pass through the filter. Ivanovsky thought that the infection might be caused by a toxin produced by bacteria. In 1898, the Dutch microbiologist Van Jewink repeated the experiments and he became convinced that the filtered solution contained a new form of infectious agent. He observed that the agent multiplied only when it affects a living cell. But his experiments did not show that it was made of particles that could be seen through a light microscope. So he called it a condagium vivum fluidum, meaning soluble living germ. Later he called it virus. Stanley in 1935 showed that viruses could be crystallized and the crystals consist largely of proteins. For this work, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1946. Since the discovery of electron microscope in 1930s, viruses have been studied in great detail. A virus consists of a genetic material covered in a protein coat. Genetic material means the material that stores the genetic information. In viruses, it will be either RNA or DNA. RNA is the ribosynuclic acid and DNA is the deoxyribonucleic acid. No virus contains both RNA and DNA. The genetic material is infectious, which means that the genetic material in the virus is responsible for causing infection in a host cell. In fact, when a virus attacks a host cell, the genetic material of the virus will hijack the host cell and compel it to produce viral components. In short, the normal behavior of the host cell is disrupted. Viruses that infect plants have single-stranded RNA and viruses that infect animals have either single or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. The function of the protein code is to protect the genetic material which is the nucleic acid. The protein code is made up of small subunits called capsomeres. Capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric forms. Let's see the structure of tobacco mosaic virus or the TMV. TMV was the first virus ever to be discovered. It has a rod-like appearance. Its genetic material is a single-stranded RNA. Its protein code or capsid is made up of 2130 capsomeres which are arranged in a helical fashion. Now, do you know what bacteriophages are? Phage means eater. Bacteriophage means bacteria eater. Yes, bacteriophages are actually viruses that infect bacteria. They have a head, collar, tail and tail fibers. The head contains the genetic material. Once attached to the bacterial cell, the bacteriophages will inject their viral genetic material into the bacterium. This will disrupt the normal synthesis of proteins and nucleic acids of the bacterial cell and the bacterium will be forced to manufacture the viral particles instead. It's like kidnapping the bacterium. Within minutes, the bacterial cell will rupture and hundreds of new bacteriophages will be released to infect other bacterial cells. This picture shows some bacteriophages injecting their viral genetic material into E. coli bacterium. See how small is a virus when compared to a bacterial cell. In the beginning of this video, I had explained how deadly the viruses are. However, they have some uses. They can be used as vectors that take the required material for treatment of diseases to various target cells. 
about bacteriophages, they will attack only bacteria and not human cells. So they can be used to infect and destroy some pathogenic bacteria found in humans. This is called phage therapy. Viruses can be used as carriers for genetically modified sequences of genomes to their host cells. Another important use of viruses is that they can be used for producing vaccines. Some vaccines against polio, measles, chickenpox, etc. use live or weakened viruses or dead virus particles. The polio vaccine, when it was introduced by Jonas Salk in 1955, it was treated as the biggest news in medical history. Do you know how vaccines work? When the vaccines are introduced to your body by injection, your immune system will think that the dead viruses in the vaccines are the real disease-causing viruses and will make antibodies to fight against them. These antibodies will stay in your body, giving you immunity. In the future, even if you get exposed to real disease-causing viruses, the antibodies already present in your body will protect you from the disease. In agriculture, viral insecticides are used which can affect a wide variety of insect pests and these insecticides will not kill any other organisms, for example, the crops. That's all what we will discuss about viruses in this video. Now, let's learn about viroids. Viroid means virus-like. They are smaller than the smallest virus. They are the smallest known agents of infectious disease. They were discovered by Diner in 1971 when he was doing a research on what causes the potato spindle tuber disease. As the name of the disease indicates, the affected potatoes were spindle shaped. Spindle shape means like this, narrow and tapering at the ends and bulge at the center. Later he found that it was caused by a viroid which was 80 times smaller than the smallest virus. This viroid was later named the potato spindle tuber viroid. Viroids are also non-cellular. They are composed of only a short strand of circular single-stranded RNA. Yes, viroid is just a strand of RNA. What makes viroid different from a virus is the absence of protein coat. So now you must have understood that since viroids are also non-cellular like viruses, they were not included in Vitaka's classification. Next group of organisms which didn't find a place in Vitaka's classification was lichens. You may remember the reason why Vitaka didn't include viruses and viroids in his classification. It was because they are non-cellular and are not truly living. But what about lichens? They are truly living organisms. The problem with lichens was that they are dual organisms, that is, composed of two entirely different organisms, fungi and algae. Here, fungi and algae get into a symbiotic relationship benefiting from each other. The fungal partner will provide shelter for the algae and in turn, algae will provide the fungal partner with food. These two partners will fuse in such a way that we can never separate them again. To know more about these amazing organisms, check out part 4 of the biological classification lecture. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will be back soon with more exciting topics in biology. Stay tuned.